Hello everybody, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Model Adventure. Welcome back. Here we have part six now of this build of this lovely little K2 ambulance from Airfix. Yes, we are dragging it all out a bit and uh, yes, it's a bit slow going, but this is for beginners, it's for newbies, it's for people to learn new techniques and everything. And what I'm trying to do is bundle it all into one build. So basically, what I'm doing is we've we've gone back to basics. If you go back to parts one, two and three, we've looked at how to get parts off of sprues. We've looked at different types of tools. We've looked at how to do gluing and all sorts of stuff. Um, and then we've also been looking at airbrushing. I've made a separate video about airbrushing techniques and the do's and don'ts of the, what I do and what I don't do, really, I should say. Um, and then we've gone on and we built up the chassis. We've primed the chassis. We've got it painted green now. We've looked at getting rid of ejector pin marks. If you remember, the floor was absolutely covered in them. They're pretty much gone now. It's not perfect, but it's uh, it's plenty good enough for what's under there. And then we also had all those ejector pin marks on this bulkhead. And this is in the driver's area. We've got rid of all of them. So we also had ejector pin marks on here, didn't we, that we've sanded out. So what we've done is then gone round with black Mr. Surface Sir, which is a primer, um, to basically just prime it, cover everything up and see what it all looks like. It'll show up any marks or anything. And usually, have a look at your kit. I don't know if you will have the same. Something I noticed in the floor here, I have a, a line. See this diagonal line here? It's like it's been moulded in. It's weird. It's dead straight. I have, I've, I've been nowhere near it with a scriber or anything, but it's, uh, it's very strange. I don't know why that's there. But um, anyway, so we're going to leave that because that is where our door is going to go. We have the door open. This door here is going to be open, so it's going to be kind of sat there like that. So the door is going to cover it up. So there we are. Um, why have I done everything black? Okay, I prime with black. This is for the beginners. I prime with black as like a pre-shading. So what you can't see on here, there is black. Okay, it's all painted green, but there are bits of black with like a pre-shade. So rather than have this horrible yellowy tan coloured plastic, this colour here showing through, we've got the black showing through as a, as a background. So that's why that's all primed in black. I painted the wheels black, um, first of all, to see if there was a seam. It's a good base for the base coat for what we're going to do with the tyres. We'll do that in this video. And it's also a good base for the green in the centre is leaving you a little bit of shadowing in there. So it kind of gives it a lot more depth and it crispens up the detail. So I've been sat here for about an hour thinking about what we should do next. The only thing, the thing I did forget to talk about in the last video was these two parts here, these B10s, these are the runners for the stretchers. The stretchers are going to sit in there and I forgot to get them off and paint them so I've done that off camera and these are actually going to glue into there like so and then they'll have a rail for the stretcher to sit on. Now I'd like to fit them now, but the problem with the fitting them now, when we come to spray the cream, it's going to be impossible to get the cream up underneath. So I'm going to have to spray them separately and then touch up wherever we do any gluing. So that's something else for the newbies to learn. If we glue them on now, they'll get in the way of painting the floor. I'm going to do a wood grain effect on the floor, which would be nice for you, those of you that want to give it a go. Um, because this here is like plywood, this floor, and then this here is like planks. And uh, we're going to paint all the, the flooring and everything wood. Um, I'm going to be doing some brush painting in this video. I'm going to use these uh, Revell Aqua Colours, which I like very, very much. They're wonderful when thinned with water. Uh, but the first thing I want to do, this door has glazing in it, has a window in it. And as you can see, on this side, we have the outer frame moulded in. On this side, it's like a recess. And the actual frame is moulded onto the clear part. As you can see there, is that a piece of, what is that? There's something on the clear part or in it, it's a bit weird. So it's got a bubble in it almost, look down in that bottom right hand corner, you can see it. It's a bit weird. So anyway, we'll leave that there for now. Strange. Okay, so removing the clear parts, um, you need to be very careful when you remove clear parts from sprues. Sometimes, particularly older kits, the sprues can be very, very brittle. So when we remove them, we don't cut right up to the part. 
we cut well away from the part. So as you can see here, I've got my cutters well away and I'm cutting away. Now this plastic isn't that brittle, it would have gone, it would have snapped. The problem, the, the problem with cutting close on clear parts, if you remember when we talked about cutting ordinary parts, if we cut right up to them, we can cut them and pull a chunk of plastic out. The problem with clear parts is what that does, it kind of pulls a little chunk out and because it's clear, it's kind of reflected through the part and it sticks out like a sore thumb. So be very, very careful. What I'm going to do here is come in a little bit closer, nip that off, and then I'm going to grab my 400 grit sanding stick and just, just going in one direction, remove that sprue nib, just like so. There's a little bit on that face, which I'm just going to take off. So you can see now we've got that sprue nib completely removed. And that is the way to do it. Now, the other thing you'll notice, those that watch my channel all the time will know what I'm going to do now because I do it all the time. That little bit in the corner is bugging me. It's like a little... I don't think it's supposed to be there. I can't see it on the instructions. Anyway, um, if you look at this part, I'm not sure I'll be able to show you on camera, but if you look at the part, when you put it on an angle, when you look through the edge, it sort of looks like it has a chrome ring around it. See that shiny line appears when you look through it. I want to get rid of that. <clears throat> so what I do with my clear parts, I've got a sharpie here and I'm going to come along and I'm going to do all the edges black. Okay, so we're just going to colour in the edges. It doesn't matter if we go onto the glazing, we can get that off with some IPA afterwards. <clears throat> Got a frog in my throat, I'm sorry. So there we go. We're going to make sure we get around the big edge as well. Or the outer edge, should I say. And what will happen now is you won't see that horrible chrome ring around it. As it does look awful. <clears throat> Let me just clear my throat a second. Right, Jess is going to pay a, a star in roll now because she's decided to have a little bit of a moan at people. So um, you can see now we've got that black around there, all around the edge. And I need to, I've got some IPA on here, some alcohol. And I'm just going to take the, the ink away from the actual window part. You don't have to do this now, you can do it after it's glued in, it doesn't really matter. But I just want to show you what we have now, if you look at the part, you can see that chrome ring has disappeared. We don't have that horrible shiny edge. So if you're doing something like a Lancaster bomber, funnily enough, with all the windows down the sides, this is really important because, especially in the larger scales, if you look along the length of the Lancaster and you haven't done this, you're going to see these shiny rings around all the windows. So if you do this, it'll stop that happening. I do this on all my models now. It's something I learnt on large scale planes from a guy called Ian Ogvey. I saw him do it on a uh, 132nd scale Heinkel 111 and I thought, yep, yeah, I'm going to do that. And I've done it ever since on every model I've built. Now, unfortunately, I've got some alcohol on my fingers. I've gone round and taken that Sharpie off. So I'm just going to go round with the Sharpie and do the outer edge again. Just like so. There we go. And that's that. Where's the lid? Here we are. So that's that done. And then what we can do is drop this into the door. And as you can see, I've left the paint there. Or the primer, should I say. So that's going to drop into that door. And now you can see we've got the frame. Okay, we've got the frame on that side on the glazing, we've got the frame on that side moulded into the part. So we've now got a frame on the other side. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to mask the window before I paint the white, because that frame will be white on that side and it will be green on that side. And if I don't do it first, then I'll end up having to go in afterwards. So I want to do it now. I've got finger marks all over it, don't worry about that, doesn't matter. What I'm going to do now is very controversial. You can buy all sorts of glues. Here's one here, micro crystal clear, and that is for gluing clear parts. Okay, if you want to use that, 
absolutely fine use it it's great it's wonderful it dries dead clear I tend to use it for headlamp lenses and stuff because the um, the hot glues may affect the, the silver paint you've painted inside the headlamps. I'm sure we'll see that later. You can also use it for small things like little windows in airliners and stuff. You can actually make the windows with it. But I like to use hot cements to glue my clear parts in because there's nothing worse than having a, a clear part glued in. And then when you go to mask it, it cracks out. You can imagine like on my Lancaster, in fact, I'll grab it. <clears throat> so you can imagine here I've got these side windows here glued in okay you can imagine if I glued them in with something that wasn't hot like a like a crystal clear that doesn't actually weld the part in it just glues it and then you pick it up and touch it and you pop the window out can you imagine what a nightmare that would be so these are all glued in hot all of these windows are glued in hot with um with Tammy extra thin so that's what I'm going to do they're very much the same scale as well this is 30 second scale and this is 35th scale, so you can see how good these would look together. So what I'm going to do now is glue this in and I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, if you don't feel confident, by all means, use your white PVA glues, whatever, your canopy glues. I'm going to use Tammy Extra Thin and I'm going to show you how I do it. So to do that, I'm going to zoom you in. OK, so there we are. Right. Oh, we will come in a bit more. Hang on. There we go. Right, let me get that out of the way so it doesn't try and focus on that. So we'll just have a plain green background. And what I'm going to do with the extra thin, okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this under here so you can see what I'm doing. You take the glue out and you get most of the glue off of the brush. And then what we're going to do is come along, okay, and we are going to just work over to it. So I'm not going to dab it on the clear part, I'm going to dab it on the plastic part, then move the brush over and you will see that as I move the brush over, the glue will capillary around. See that? I'll do it again on the top. Don't worry about those glue marks, don't touch them, they'll be absolutely fine, they will disappear. Okay, so making sure I'm on the camera. Come in there, move over, and as you can see, as soon as I get over there with the brush, the glue rushes around. There you go. And that's that. So that is now glued in. Okay? Do not touch it. Don't do anything. Leave it for at least an hour. Try not to put it down flat on its face, because if there's any glue around there, it will capillary out and run onto the clear part. So... What you need to do, let me zoom you back out, what you need to do is put it down. Come on camera, go, 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 go. There we go. Put it down on an edge or something like that. So where you could put it on the back there. So that the clear part is in the air and nothing's touching it. And just leave that, just, just for 10 minutes initially, just to let it gel off. You need to leave it for like at least a couple of hours before you start messing with it. So we'll leave that alone and that's that done. Um, so the next thing I want to look at is painting the tires because what I would like to do is move on to painting the interior. But I'm going to paint the tires. In fact, no, we won't. The next thing we'll do, we'll paint the engine. Now, I believe the engine in this ambulance should be a light blue colour. And here I'm going to use Revell Aqua Colour. OK, I'm using this because it's readily available in the UK. I'm not sure about the rest of the world. It's... Um, not very harmful. It doesn't smell like uh, like your old solvent paints do, like the Mr. Service or the stuff I've been using. As you can see, it's very thick. OK, um, you need to keep an eye on them because the lids don't seal that particularly well. So just every now and again, open them up, have a look. If the paint's starting to thicken up, I use this. This is the proper Revell thinner, the Aqua Mix, Aqua Color Mix. Um, and just put some in there and give it a stir because they will go off and they will go solid. So what I'm going to do is grab a brush. What have we got this one? Let's got this one here. This is an old ammo brush. These are quite good actually. These ammo synthetic brushes, I do like them very, very much. They hold their shape quite well. This one's had a lot of abuse. It's had a lot of solvent paints and all sorts on it. And you can see the end is nice and square um, and it's, it's kept its shape. So I'm going to get some of the paint out of here. 
And as you can see, that paint is far too thick to use as it is. So I'm going to get some paint in there. That's way too much, but never mind. And I'm not going to use it straight out of the pot. I'm going to thin it. So I'm going to grab some water. An old eye drops bottle here, which is perfect for putting water in. And I'm just going to add some water in there. Give this a stir. Now you can see we've got a very thin mix. When I pull up the side, it should be like milk. As you can see, it should be like milk and it should just stain the surface. So what I'm going to do is get the lighting a bit better for you and for me. <laughs> okay, what I'm going to do is come along in here with a brush and just paint this engine. You can see I've wrapped masking tape around the axle. It just makes life a bit easier. Because it means we don't have to worry about touching the axle. And as you can see, this is going on very, very thin. It's going to need a couple of coats. So the reason I do this is because when it comes down to little areas like here at the front, it makes it much easier. Because it's thin, it will flow off the brush a lot easier than if you, if you have the paint thick, okay? So basically it's kind of like, if the paint is thick, the paint will only go where you put the brush. If the paint is thin, the paint will run where you want it to go. It will sometimes run where you don't want it to go, but uh, generally you can almost use it like a, a wash which you probably don't know what I'm talking about if you're a newbie, but we will be getting to that soon. We'll be looking at washes, filters. We'll try and cover everything in this in these videos. As I say, it's aimed at beginners, but it's also aimed at newbies that might want to just take their model in that extra step. And without too much investment, so it's cheap, and without too much skill, like, you know, being able to scratch build and stuff, we can take our models to that extra next level, which is what I'm going to do with the painting of the interior. And we're going to look at, as I say, wood effects. We're going to look at the pre-shading. We'll probably do some post-shading. And Basically, it's just going to be, instead of it just being, you know, green and brown and red or whatever, it'll be all lots of colours in between as well. So there you can see I've painted that engine. Live on camera, people are always asking me to do painting. I've brush painted the engine, as you can see, it's very, very thin. You can see through it, and it's going to need another couple of coats. So we could leave that in there like that. I'm going to grab a cloth and just wipe the brush off. I'm going to put some water in here. And I can just rinse the brush off in there clean it there we go and I'm not going to worry about properly cleaning it because now what we're going to do is paint the gearbox so I believe the gearboxes on British vehicles were generally green so it's green here and you can see it's very thick so I'm going to put a drop of green in there and because I'm not worried about perfect color matching all that, I'll use that water there and we'll mix that up there we go <coughs> I think the, the gearbox were actually a bit of a brighter green than this, but hey-ho. And then we're going to paint the gearbox. Well, this is actually the bell housing. But we can imagine that the bell housing was part of the gearbox, hey? I'm not really sure if the bell housing would have been part of the gearbox or part of the engine on this particular engine. But on this one... On my version, it's part of the gearbox. Get the paint up around there. Paint the back without doing the, we don't want to paint the prop shafts. As you can see, once again, that paint is very, very thin. Just going to come a bit more forward on there. And this is really a, basically just a repeat of what we did on the Montes Humber. So you can see once again, 
paint is very thin, very thin, you can almost see through it, and it's great. So we can leave that for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, and then we should be able to give it another coat. These Ravel Aqueous paints, I really do like them. I really do enjoy using them for brush painting. When you thin the living delicates out of them like that, they are brilliant. Okay, so again, wipe the brush off. Did the brushes. Notice how I'm cleaning the brush. Never do this. You see some people doing this with their brushes. Always, I bend the paper over, squeeze it. And if you clean your brush like that, you'll never have any problems. Okay, right, and I do give my brushes a hard time, I must be honest. So that's our engine and gearbox done. Now we can look at doing the exhaust. I've got here, this is Ravel 36183. It's rust colour. Again, very, very thick. So we'll get some of that out of there. And I'm just going to use this as a basis for the rust colour. You can see the exhaust is already painted black. Get some water, thin this out. Trouble is, if you have it too thick, it won't flow. We want it to flow off the brush, right? So, a little bit of careful painting here. You can always go around afterwards and touch up. Just going to do the exhaust downpipe down into there, just like so. And coming up under the axle, get around the sides. And this is the beauty of having the paint a bit thinner. As you can see, I can paint the sides from the front. I can push the brush over and get the paint to flow around. I'm going to have to do some touch up here because I've got to get down in between there and I don't think I'm going to do that without touching the axle. Well, maybe I can. So get the sides of the exhaust done. Come through here, get the side in there. Yes, you need a steady hand for this. Steady-ish. At the end of the day, it's only paint. Generally, because it's watercolour, if you're quick, you can just wipe it off with a damp cotton bud if you do get it where you don't want it to go. So there we are. As I say, you can just touch up, you know. I mean, it's going to have rust and mud and everything on it anyway, so just go up to the front of the silencer there. There we are. Paint the silencer. Gosh, I'm putting the paint on quite heavy, heavier than I normally would because I want to cover it in one coat if I can and because it doesn't matter because it's, it's at the end of the day it's a rusty old exhaust so the surface finish is not particularly important but we do want to try and get the paint as neat and tidy as we can without getting any on the chassis he says as he gets some on the chassis. I think Jess might start barking again in a minute. I can hear another dog barking. And then we're coming in from the top. Get the top painted. Just like so. Again, no one's ever going to see it. But hey, 
you know it's there you know it's done properly just always think of it it's always good practice it's better to mess up on something you're not going to see than mess up on something that's in your face and obvious so you can practice your detail painting in here and if you mess up and get some paint on the chassis then up under here it doesn't really matter because no one's ever going to see it only you or the rest of YouTube if you make videos so there we are that's that done and that is just that basic basic rust colour we've got going there for our exhaust so I'm going to give the engine another coat now and wipe that paint out of there as you can see I'm never cleaning the brush properly it's not an issue so come over here and grab some of this paint I think I've actually got this a little bit too thin to be honest what I think I might do is get some more paint in there just a bit You can see even with the too thin, it's still, you can still use it, it's not a problem. So we can come along now, as you can see there's only a few minutes have gone by, this is all filmed live. I can come along and give that another coat. Just like that. down the sides over the back down the sides just like so And there we are now you might decide to leave it like that you might decide to give it another coat it's all up to you clean the brush off get the green another coat on there you can see I'm because the paint is so thin we can Put it on quite thickly and let it flow around. I really do like this Ravel Aquacolor paint. It just it is so good to brush paint with. One of the worst paints to brush paint with I find is Tamiya, Tamiya acrylics. But you can do stuff. You can put stuff in it and make it better to paint. But the reason I'm showing you these Ravel Aquacolors is because, as I say, they're readily available. Uh, from places like Hobbycraft if you're in the UK um, they're not too expensive they don't smell at all the thinners actually smells lovely if you have got young kids around keep the thinners this stuff here okay if you have got young kids make sure this is well out of reach because when I open that and smell it it smells absolutely gorgeous it smells like like a cherry liqueur almost it is absolutely gorgeous smelling and kids I think would probably drink it thinking it's something else um, so be very very careful if you've got kids around but of course the other beauty of that is when you spray it the residual smell you get left behind is nice <laughs> rather than a horrible solvent smell or like an enamel smell which is disgusting so yeah, as I say, it's very, very nice, so be careful. Right, so that's our engine, gearbox and exhaust on. I'm going to give that engine one more coat. As you can see, just with a couple of colours, we've got three colours on there, and a brush and a drop of water, we've brought the whole thing to life, and then we'll do some more work on the exhaust and make it look a bit more rusty. So I'm going to get myself all sorted out now, and we're going to look at painting some tyres. Right, painting tyres something that scares a lot of people but it's something we have to do model aircraft tanks cars trucks everything we generally have to do it and generally the better kits have molded plastic wheels like this a lot of people like to have vinyl tires personally i hate them most modelers do 
I would rather have a one piece wheel like this and have to paint it. Now the problem is always painting tires is getting a nice neat line. Now what a lot of people will do is make cut a circle mask and they'll mask the tire and spray the wheel, but you never get that really crisp, sharp line doing it that way. What I'm going to show you now is a way to get a really crisp line. And also, if you've got a cotton bud handy, in fact, we use one of the softer ones, you've got a rescue if it starts to go wrong. So what I've got here is Ravel 09 Anthracite. This is like a, it's a tar colour, obviously. Um, and I prefer this to tire black. It's a great colour. And you can see I've got it mixed here, very thin. You can see I pull it out the side. It's like the consistency of, it's, it's so watery, it's untrue. And the reason I'm doing this, I'm going to zoom you in again. Let's bring you in like so. What I'm going to do, okay, is try and get this so I can see. So you can see what I'm doing. I've got plenty of paint on the brush. I'm not going to be shy with the brush, and I'm going to just basically paint the tire and then run the brush into the corner. the paint will find its own way into the rim. Okay, so I'm not doing any special tidy painting. I'm not even actually painting up to the rim. I'm just putting the paint there. And because there's a lot of paint on the brush, it will flow. It'll flow down into there and it'll capillary around. Bearing in mind, I'm doing this, I would normally be, I've got my face about 18 inches away from this and I would normally have it about 10 inches away. There we go, and obviously you could do this through a magnifier, through an optivizer, whatever. It's going to make life a lot easier for you. You can see there, that we've got a perfectly painted tyre. Okay, I can see I've got one bit missing there. The other thing you can do, if you really want to go, go mental, is thin the paint even more and then just touch it and it will run round. But you need to put about six or seven coats on. I'll show you that technique on another one. Let me get some water in here. I'm going to take some of this out and put it in here. It's really, it's really, really thin. Jess thinks there's a delivery driver coming. It's actually one of my neighbours being dropped off in his work van. <laughs> so um, we'll take one of these tyres and do the back. And you can see what I'm going to do here. I just come on with the brush and touch it into the corner. It's not playing ball. I think it's because it's got matte paint underneath it, but normally it will capillary around the rim if you've got some not matte paint. But normally it will chase around. But hopefully you can see that as I do this, I just push the brush into the corner. Yeah, it's not completely around because there's matte paint underneath. If I had, if I give it a gloss coat first, or if the paint underneath it wasn't dead matte, what would happen here? The paint would just flow around that wheel rim and you'd have a perfectly painted line. It's a question a lot of beginners ask, and it's a question, it's an issue that a lot of beginners struggle with, is the neat and tidy painting of tires. So you can see there once again, Perfectly painted wheel rim. As I say, the paint is quite thin, so it's going to need a lot of coats to get it to cover. Okay, so I'm going to go on and do the rest. Something else I'll show you, actually. Just one thing I'll show you. If you do get an issue, okay, so you've, you've done this, you've come along, you've come along, you've put your brush into the corner, and, oh, you make a mistake. As long as you're quick, grab a cotton bud, 
you just wipe it around and because the paint's so thin you can just wipe it all off and then you can start again or you can just leave it to dry and then paint some green over the top of it there we go once again we're going to paint this rim just I'm just I'm not brush painting I'm just putting the paint into the corner and with this Ravel paint don't worry that it's so thick and building up because it's building up on the surface because it's like 95% water it will dry back and it'll be dead flat it'll be smooth There we are. Once again, even though we messed up and then cleaned up, we've got a perfectly painted tyre. Alright, so there we go. There's that one dry. I can see I've got a bit I've missed there. This is the problem you see with doing this on camera. I can't get in as close as I normally would to do it. Or indeed as close as you would. But hopefully even though the result is not perfect, I've demonstrated to you how you can get a perfect result. The other thing is, don't use a small brush. A lot of people think, oh, it's detail painting, I'm going to use a tiny little brush. You can't get enough paint on a tiny little brush. If you watch a lot of figure painters, they'll use quite large brushes. Okay, so there you are. Well, I'll get the rest done and then I'll be back. I've just realised something. When I go in with the second coat, the capillary action works. So I'm going to show you on here now, show you on the back of this one. I'll take the paint, this is the thicker of the paint here. I'll take some of this, get it in the brush, get the brush well loaded. And I'm going to try and show you on camera. Make sure we're in focus, right. When I touch the paint, you watch, you should see a glossy ring run around the wheel rim and guess what because the camera's on it's not happening look at that bloody typical you can see it's starting to go here you, there you go you can see it there if you look there you can see a glossy ring down at sort of five o'clock and it's chasing around and that's what will happen It means you don't have to paint up to the wheel rim because basically the paint is doing it for you. There we go. <clears throat> and if you remember I said I was you know building the paint up really heavy and it was very thick on there. You can see that how it dries back, it's perfect. And the other thing I like about this Ravel anthracite, you can see it's got a very, very slight sheen and it's very accurate for tires very accurate indeed so um there we are so that's our wheels and tires painted but i just wanted to show you that to show you that it does actually work right so now we have our tires all painted and there's the spare as you can see it's looking all lovely and as i said that um <clears throat> that color anthracite matte is absolutely lovely uh, there is another one here which is tar black which is slightly darker um, and if you want to what we can do is dry brush with that but um, I'm sure I used the anthracite didn't I? yeah that is the anthracite on there um, so basically dust on there so basically we've got all our wheels and tires painted as you can see and all the rims look lovely so if you do the same as I've done, you should get as good a result. So, and as I say, if you thin the paint, thin it heavily, it will flow around and you just put three or four coats on or whatever. And as you can see, you get a lovely smooth finish. There's a nice sheen to it. It's got that rubbery type of sheen to it. 
and we can do more work with that with some mud and everything later on. So we'll put those wheels and tyres to one side. We've also given the engine another coat of the blue and the gearbox has had another coat of the green. And then the um, exhaust, what I did, I painted over the very thin wash I made, the very thin black I made, I just painted over uh, and then just went over the cotton bud just like that, and rolled it off. And as you can see, it kind of gives it a bit more of a sort of rusty look to it. Um, but we'll do some more work with that later. So now I want to look at this floor. Now, <clears throat> there's our door and everything which is done nicely, the windows glued in nicely. So this floor, um, now the floor in the back is plywood, not painted, it's left bare. So basically in the back we're going to have wood and we're going to have cream and then we're going to have the khaki of the, uh, of the, the bed sheets and everything. Uh, so basically what I want to do is paint this floor. Now, I would normally airbrush it with like a deck tan colour or a very light brown. Uh, but for because this is a beginner, I'm going to try another method which I haven't tried before. And I'm going to see if I can make it work. And what I'm going to do is use these two colours here. These are both again Ravel colours. So this is wood brown, funnily enough, number 382. And this is ochre brown 88. So what I'm going to do, I, I, my other big aluminium mixing thing is in the sink drying and uh, not drying out um, soaking out whatever so I'm going to put some of that in there okay and then put the lid back on just thin it very slightly just a tiny drop that's one drop of water in there that's better as you can see I've got quite a big brush I'm just going to brush this on. Make sure we get right up to the corner. Don't if we go over the corner. We're going to get, we're going to go up to the corner. Just brush this on. Okay, so now we've got it covered. We can just over and put like a kind of wood grain look to it roughly this is just a start I mean it's nowhere near and then we'll do the same in the driver's area hair there this is the problem of having a dog I know it's not hair off of my head or hey so Just brush that out like that. As we said with those tyres, the beat of this Revell paint, it, as long as you've got it thinned, when it dries it just pulls down. It's also very hard wearing. I'm not sure if that there would be wood or green. Let's imagine it's wood. In this area at the front here, this is all going to be green. It's all sheet steel. There we go. Same around there, around the sides. And if you want to, you can go underneath as well. But I'm not going to do that just yet. Okay, so that's not quite ready yet to have a second coat, but I'm going to give it a go. I think my piece of fluff has come back. Okay, so there we are, we can brush that around. This brush is quite a stiff one. Uh, it's, it, it's, I've, it, I've used it purposely because I want to have like a kind of wood grain 
I want the I want to use the brush strokes as it were as the wood grain. So I'm going to let that dry. It's very difficult to have the the brush strokes going in the right area there because we're all sort of confined with where we can go. So there we go, right. So we shall let that dry. As you can see now, if I can catch it in the light, we've got brush marks in there which will which will give us a kind of wood effect. You'll see what I mean when we get towards the end. Now, if you don't want to do this, if you just want to have a brown floor, like it says in the instructions, paint the floor wood brown, um, then just paint it. You know, brush paint it, whatever, paint it brown. This up here would have been painted green. But I'm gonna what I'm gonna do here is do it wood, then I'm gonna paint it green, and then I'm gonna wear the green paint away so you can see the wood underneath it. So and also on these stretchers, these handles on the end are wood. So we're gonna add some wood colour here to these. Just like so. And then we can uh, do some work with them afterwards. And as you can see, it doesn't need to be perfect. We're not after a perfect finish perfect coverage, nothing needs to be perfect, it's all just getting some brown down. But we do want to make sure we've got every nook and cranny covered. Okay, so that's what I'm doing there. And we'll let this dry, I'll give it another coat and then I'll be back. Right, so this has had another coat now and it is almost dry, it's just not dry. I'm doing this on purpose. I've got here, this is a flesh number 33. I was going to use that lighter brown but I've decided to use this flesh colour. I'm just going to get some out with the brush into here. I haven't even bothered stirring it. Okay. <clears throat> Believe me, this will all come good in the end, I think. <laughs> I've never done it this way before, but I'm, I'm trying it and so you can see what happens. And if it doesn't work, then you know not to do it or I won't even post it. So I've got the brush here. I'm going to grab a cloth and take some of that paint off. I'm just going to try this and see what happens. If I brush this onto here, there we go. I want to make sure I get good coverage. I'm just going to get this on here and then work it so that I get differing colours in different areas. <clears throat> I've got a proper frog in my throat today, so my voice is all squeaky, isn't it? Okay, so we will have the the brown showing through. And yes, I'm stabbing this paint on. As you can see, we've got like a wood grainy finish on there. Now I know it's very pink and I know it's very bright. That's how it's supposed to be. Because when we put the wood grain effect on, it will darken it all up. And what we need to be careful of, which I'm guilty of doing in the past, is having it too dark. Because remember, this would have been 
you know, it wouldn't have been like a, a teak. It may well have been a, 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 an oak colour, but it was more likely to be like a hardwood. That remember, you know, we look at old vehicles now, and the wood that's in them is years old, so it's sort of looking quite dark. Remember, this would have been like fairly new. The wood would have only been a few months old. So it would be fairly light in colour. If you go and look at a wood merchant's, you know, go and look at a, a piece of timber that's brand new and fresh softwood, you know, and then go and look at a piece of softwood that's been out in the weather and, and all that, you know. I mean, look at a shed when it's brand new. The wood is very light in colour. As it ages, it darkens and starts to get mildew in it and all sorts of stuff. And it gets stained, doesn't it? If you, if you get oil on it, it it's going to stain it. So there we are. So there's, we've got the brown underneath. And we've got the, the flesh colour on the top. I want to give it a bit of a difference across there because I want it to look slightly different. And then if we want to, what we can do is come along with the brown. We can just grab some of the brown into here. And then we can... If you want to, we can streak some brown into there, just like so, just to add some variation. We can only make an in here as well. random pattern on these little planks because they're all going to be slightly different and when we do the oils we'll put some knots in as well I'll show you how to do that basically what we're going to do now that's the basis for our wood and then we're going to use oil paint to streak it and make it look like wood and uh, as I say I, I'm, I, I keep repeating myself you know if you're a Dead total beginner, you may not want to have a go at this. Maybe you will. I mean, maybe you want to have a go at this if you're a total beginner. But if you're not a total beginner, but you you know you want to just sort of push yourself a bit further, then this is something you could try. And as I say, this for me, I'm, I'm a beginner. I've never done this before with a brush, so we'll see how it looks. But um, already I'm liking the way it's given it a bit of texture rather than just having flat plastic. There we go. So we need to leave that to dry properly now, let it dry off, you know, for a good few hours, um, 24 hours even, and then we'll uh, look at putting some wheels on it. Okay, so we've got our floor done now and the paint is nearly dry, but as I said, we're going to leave that for 24 hours. So I can get this video finished and out there for you. We're going to do some pre-shading on the interior of the rear ambulance section. Now, if you're building this with all the doors closed, you don't need to worry about it. If you're building this as a beginner, you just want to paint it cream or white inside or whatever, then you don't need to worry about it. But what I'm doing is showing you this pre-shading effect that is going to make the interior of the ambulance look a lot more interesting. Now, as we know, the body of the ambulance, the rear body, was a wood frame with canvas. Um, so they haven't, partic uh, haven't depicted the wood frame on here. I think they did on the gecko kit. So basically on the inside, we're gonna see like a canvas effect, much like you would see on a World War I aircraft. But just for a bit of what we call artistic license in the hobby, it's just to make it, if I just paint that cream, it'll look great, cream, lovely job done. But we wanna sort of, I don't know, Give it a bit more depth, make it look a bit more realistic. So what I'm going to do, everything that's going to be painted cream, which are the inside walls here, we've got this area here that's going to be seen through that gap. We've got the um, these bits here, which I believe are wooden. If they look, they might be wooden, so we may have to do some wood graining on there. But um, the bottoms of those are certainly white or cream. Uh, and then we've got the, the roof interior here we've got the roof there and then we've got the interior of the rear doors and what I'm going to do is basically we've got these parts here as well and what I'm going to do is fit those with a blob of white tack white tack is better than blue tack um, what I'm going to do there is I'll mask that window off in a second what I'm going to do is spray the inside of this uh, 
with this sort of um, pre-shading effect as well. So we're going to... Right, sorry about that, the camera battery ran out mid-sentence. So uh, basically I've got that glued on there and now we're going to mask that window. Now there's a couple of different ways you can mask clear parts. You can do it this way, where you can take your piece of masking tape, get a cocktail stick, and just go around in the corners of where you want to mask with the cocktail stick and push the masking tape in. Obviously if you're doing something like a, a Lancaster or a B29, you all the turrets, all the glazing, yeah, you're going to have fun with this. And then with the corner of the knife I'm just going to go into the corner, a brand new blade and just cut down like so. Do the same on the other side. And the reason you use a brand new blade is because you can't push too hard. If you push too hard you will end up obviously marking the clear part. So I'm just literally letting the knife follow into the corner. And then when I peel this away it should leave that in there for me nice and neatly. And then I come over the cotton bud and just push the tape in and there we've got a nicely masked window. I can see up there I've gone slightly off but we're not going to worry about that. Uh, the other way to do it is <clears throat> if you've got some smaller masking tape, I'm not sure how wide this is. It looks like it's just, this is 6mm masking tape and it looks like that is just wider than 6mm. So what I'm going to do is cut this. I'm going to cut it with a purposely wavy line so you don't get confused which side is good and which side is bad. And then I'm going to grab a pair of tweezers. Come here tweezers. And then lay that down over there. Against the edge. Just like so. Because the camera's on it doesn't want to play ball. Basically lay that on the edge just like that. Okay and then cut across the bottom. So again with the cocktail stick. Push into there. And then with the fresh new blade cut in. Just like that. Just like that. Didn't like the way it went to that corner there, so we'll have to redo that. There we go. And then with our tweezers, we can grab that, pull that away. And then we can grab this one and pull that away. Okay, that clear part actually has a little nodule on it. And then what we'll do is get another piece of tape here. And because it's slightly narrower than the, the actual opening, what we can do is use the full width of tape and just butt it up to the edge just like so and then throw it on the bench <laughs> and then come along again with your cocktail stick run it across the top run it across the bottom and then run your knife into the corner just like so and cut through the tape. Do the same on the bottom edge and cut through the tape. And we can take the tape away. Take the tape away. And there you go. So that's your two ways of doing it. The other way you could do it is just little thin strips and go around the edge. So that's that done. So um, what I'm going to do on the back here where I got that corner just out I'm going to put another piece of tape on here rather than cut again. I'm going to grab this piece of tape here. Go. And then 
into the corner of the cocktail stick again there and then we can recut this and we'll get a recut line any disadvantage we do it this way I will probably have a mark now where I originally cut the tape so you only really get one go at this when you do it this way and if you really are worried about cutting masking tape I will just quickly show you another way. I don't know how much time I've got left. Eight minutes it's showing on the camera. What you can do, if you can imagine this is what you want to mask here, you can cut small squares of masking tape, like so, and then you can use them in here. You can use them so you can put one into that corner there. I'll just do it roughly. You can put one into that corner there. I'm going to cut that one in half. You can put one into that corner there. And as you can see, with four squares, you can make up the complete window. So that's another way to do it. Or of course you can use masking fluid. The only trouble with masking fluid, I found in my experience, if you leave it on too long, it's a nightmare to get off. So that's our window masked up. So now we can start to do this pre-shading for the last few minutes of the video. Right, so I've got my airbrush here and I have it filled with white paint. What I'm using here is MRP Fine Surface White Primer. You can use any white paint you want to use. If you want to do this by dry brushing, you can do it with a brush and what you would do is just model it on rather than brushing it on rather than um, spraying it on so what I'm going to do is just do a quick test spray that's good so it's all spraying well and then what I'm going to do is spray in all the areas where the white is going to where the cream is going to be brightest so in the middle of the panels it's going to be brighter than around the edges okay so what we can do is just come in here and spray in here and just build up it's way too heavy Nigel and just build up some white paint I need to hide that great big mess I put there see so just build it up slowly So that just the edges remain black and then what you can do is intensify the white in the middle fade the white out to the edges so you end up with like a light gray around the edges rather than the black i've got that white blotch there you can see where i sprayed it too heavily first of all hopefully that will be hidden um, and then on the inside of this door just in here we've got a seat going in here so we'll Make sure we don't have don't have it too bright around the seat. And as you can see, what we're doing is just it's just lightening the areas. So that when we spray the cream, we end up with a slightly lighter shade of cream in the middles and you'll see exactly what I mean when I come to do it. So I'm going to intensify the white in here because this is right in the back. When you look in the back doors, if you have the back doors open, it's going to be the furthest bit away from you. So just intensify the white in there, put something quite heavy. There we go. The back of this door is, this door is going to be open so we don't need to worry too much about that but we can we can brighten up those areas there and then when we spray it it will look old and weathered okay so I'm just gonna do the same on the rest of it and then I'll come back and we'll say goodbye and there we go so you can see interior there we've got that bulkhead panel there we've got the interior of the roof 
as you can see nice and blotchy just to give it that kind of I don't know kind of 3d effect weather effect whatever you want to call it it's got those um sliding window covers there we've got the uh, this is the underneath the support for the upper uh, stretchers and inside panels there so you'll see when we spray that that cream color we will heavily thin the paint and then we'll spray it very very fine and we will see the white coming through and the black will become like a shadow and uh, you'll see what I mean it's very similar to people that do aircraft modeling they tend to um, do what's called pre-shading and they go around and put black lines or dark grey lines on the panel lines of the aircraft and then when they spray the camouflage the black lines show through it's not in the slightest bit realistic you don't tend to see that on real things but it kind of adds that I don't know it's the artistic license it just adds a bit of interest you can imagine if you build a uh, a Cold War Valiant or a white Vulcan uh, you would end up with a white block of plastic so if you do some pre-shading do some streaking do some shadowing just some tonal changes you can really really make that model look like a scale model rather than a toy that's what you're basically after so uh, what have we covered in this video so we've done the wheels and well we painted the tires and I've showed you how to get the lovely result on your tires uh, using the Revell anthracite colour uh, we've painted the engine, the gearbox and the exhaust. Uh, we've got more work to do on the exhaust yet. I've removed the masking from there. Um, and then we've done the pre-shading on. Oh, we've done our some wood grain as well. This is an experiment for me as much as it is for you. So uh, that's what we're going to do. And in the next part, what we'll do is use some oils, uh, some brown oil, get that down there, streak it so it makes it look like wood. We're after a different effect here because this is obviously planks. This is ply. So we're going to put some more knots and stuff in this and we'll put some knots in there as well. But the difference is, well, this is going to be painted over green. This will be left natural. Um, I may do some trickery around this door to have that slightly different colour. We shall see. But uh, anyway, um, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you've learned something. As I say, if you're a dead, you know, dead new beginner, you've probably learned something about painting the tyres. You may not want to do any of this pre-shading wood grain stuff or whatever. And that's absolutely fine. But for those of you that do, I'm showing you the way. So uh, thanks for watching. And well, sorry, I'm showing you how I do it. So I will be careful there. So well, thanks for watching. And I'll see you all soon for a part seven. Bye for now.